Okay, here we go then, gang. Rehearsing. And we're doing the camera. Hello, my name is Shuti Gatwa and I play Eric Kwabena Effiong on Sex Education on Netflix. <laughs> Sex Education is a coming of age romantic comedy drama. So it covers quite a lot of genres, but it, it achieves in all of them. <laughs> I'm John Jennings, uh, the producer of Sex Education, season one and currently season two. And action! It's a play! <laughs> Don't let them breathe on you! Camera, 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 camera! <laughs> what is going on? My job is to help get the show shot, completed and put on the telly. Work very closely with our directors and our executive producers and our writers and our very talented team of art department, our designers, costume, makeup, bringing everyone together to make our world, which hopefully the world love, um, which they seem to be. Stars of Sex Education, Emma Mackey, hello. Hello. Shuti Magua, hello. Hello. Um, welcome to the red carpet at the BAFTAs. Is this your very first BAFTAs? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> yep, yep. It's, it's a lot of anxiety. A lot. I'm feeling nervous. Excitement. But... It's Excitement good. and happiness, we're very happy. The way that you guys' lives have changed as actors has been quite ridiculous over the past few months. Sex education, yeah. what a wow, that's the only thing I can say. <laughs> it's a wow. <laughs> it is a wow. It's a wow something, to be honest with you. Um, talk to me about what you think it is about your characters that people love so much. Um, I think what people like about Eric is that he's very, he's very generous, he's full of light and he cares about people so much and he's just like, He's just, you just want to be friends with him and mm -hmm. I think people relate to him and he's just got a good heart, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what people like about oh. yeah. him. Yeah, 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 I'll take that. Um, <laughs> I think people love about Maeve that she's so fearless, she's unashamedly herself and I think that that like kind of encapsulates the feeling of the show as well mm -hmm. and it encourages people to be fearless yeah. and themselves and I think people identify mm -hmm. with that. I definitely felt empowered by watching Maeve on the show, Eric. so it was good. Is Sex Education the TV show that you guys wished you had as teens? Yes. yes. Yeah, and my, like, my family, we've spoken about it before, but like yeah. my family, my grandparents say yeah. to me, like, I wish the show had existed, which I think is so amazing and it's a yeah. testament to like how a show can be fun and entertaining but also actually useful and mm. like help people and as a tool, I think that's amazing. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. literally educational. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There we have it. Now, when it comes to come and see things, I mean, we established you guys are a little bit starstruck and a bit like, ah! Um, is there anybody, like, uh, any acting heroes that are going to be here tonight that you can't wait to meet or at least just stare at? Oh my God, everyone. everyone. I think I'm going to be staring at everyone. Like, I'm staring at, like, I'm staring at you, Clara. I'm staring at everyone. Like, everyone looks like, amazing. Yeah. Graham Norton's over there, fam. <laughs> like, it's, it's a it's lot a is going on. It's a little bit exciting. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone. Well, look, congratulations for the success of Sex Education. And we can't wait for the next series. I know people keep asking you what's going on. So I'm going to be another person to ask you what's going on. Um, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> We're filming. Wonderful. We've started Four filming minutes. and that is it. That is all we can tell you for now. All right, but That's season two is imminent. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Lovely. Shuti, Emma, thank you thank so you very much. So much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good thank night. You. you too. My name is Rio. I am the production trainee on Sex Education Series 2. Every day changes. There's constant different tasks, especially in the production office. You're sort of like a runner for production, so you're constantly doing running errands, running things to and from set. Scripts change all the time. Um, and they need to be handed out to the crew so everyone's on the same page, they go for different colours. I am Natalie, I'm the script supervisor. I'm basically the director's sort of right hand person. So it's my job to make sure that everything written on this page gets filmed, that the actors say the right words and that their continuity matches in every different shot that we do so that the editors have as many options as possible when they're cutting the scenes together. The schedule is it's pretty full on on this one. There's a lot of different locations. There's all the characters' houses. There's the school, Moordale. There's the, wor the world that the place has been created in. And every week we find ourselves putting in the miles, find ourselves in different places all the time. There's, there's a lot to do on this. Hi there, my name is Chris Allen. I'm prop master on Sex Education 2. Um, we are based in this old university um, down near Carley on, uh, in South Wales. The production company have been very fortunate in when they were looking for this, uh, for this location. 
that not only did they find a great building to set most of the production in, but they've got great surroundings as well, which has given us rivers, forests, uh, and, and a whole array of beautiful scenery for backdrops, um, which has really, I believe, added to the whole uh, quality of the production. Well, I'm Gus Wookie. I'm a uh, construction manager for Sex Education. Basically, we, uh, we've built the, all the sets. Typical day is uh, liaise with the um, production designer, Sam, see what drawings we've, they've got for us, and then uh, work out what we've got to build. This is Asa's very first time at the BAFTAs. And, and Gillian said, to help me deal with the nerves, I should imagine everyone naked. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. Yep. Wow. Mm hmm. Oof, this feels a little bit wrong. It's perfectly ah, all right. Mum! Shit! <sighs> what? That's all right. You'll get used to it. You'll get used to the shock. I'm not sure um, you'll get over the cod piece that Adam Driver's wearing. <laughs> Jim, we need to get off oh, the okay. Yes, the, um, the nominations are... So I'm Sam Harley, I'm their production designer, um, and myself and my department look after kind of all facets of the show, uh, visually that you see on screen that isn't an actor, like what they're wearing or their hair and makeup. So we look after the sets, any kind of special effects, cars, animals, everything down f f up from like the big sets that we build to the kind of wallet that Jean would carry. So I'm one of the crowd uh, costume supervisors, so I look after probably between 50 and 100 essays on set every day. We style them for each story day. You need huge volumes of people to style in the morning, so it's high energy first thing, then high energy looking after them, maintaining the costumes on set every day. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of maintenance as well because there's four to five garments per individual essay, and we deal between 50 and 100, so a lot of maintenance. So my name is Mike, I'm a crowd assistant director. My job is to cast and book all the featured extras and the supporting artists that you see on screen. Uh, and basically every time you see corridor scenes or, or any extras, our job is to get them through costume and makeup in the morning, give them a little briefing in the morning with what kind of performances they're going to do, either hype them up or get them into the kind of frame of mind they needed to perform and then put them in front of the camera. So this is what we do in the job. We can go stuff like this. Okay guys, I'm just going to ask for some performances now. So everyone pay attention, here we go. So we go to stuff like this. Cheer, very happy. Everyone boo, like really annoyed. Boo. Everyone be like, Mike's amazing! Mike's amazing! <laughs> so you can basically get them to do whatever you want, within reason. We are a contemporary show, set in the UK, but we're heavily influenced by John Hughes, the 1980s, the 90s films. Well, it's been described as a love letter to John Hughes, which I think is a really, really perfect explanation of this series. It's very stylized, it's very funny, um, but also very poignant. There's some real heartbreaking moments in it as well. I'm Laurie Nunn and I'm a screenwriter and I'm a breakthrough Brit. I'd always been interested in storytelling in one way or another ever since I was a kid. I used to write terrible teenage diaries and then I got into filmmaking when I was in my late teens. Um, my mum gave me a little video camera and I started sort of making quite experimental short films. It wasn't until I was sort of in my early 20s that I really fell in love with um, the medium of TV. You can get such a deep, intimate understanding of the characters and uh, that sort of concept really blew me away and that's when I decided to, I, that's what I wanted to focus on. Um, so my breakthrough project is the Netflix original series Sex Education. One of the producers that I work with at Eleven Film had come up with the sort of central conceit of what would happen if we put a teenage sex therapist on a school campus. I feel probably most proud in the show of the relationship between Otis and his best friend Eric. They're two completely different characters who have so little in common but they just love and accept each other for exactly who they are. At its core it's really a love story between two male friends. It was sort of my guiding light throughout the writing of it and, it, and if I felt lost I'd always come back to that and then I would find my way. Being recognised as a breakthrough Brit makes me feel like I can sort of just take a breath and take a step back and really sort of look at all of the 
work that I've done over the last few years, it's more of a relief than anything else. Um, and yeah, I just feel really proud to be included in the list of people. Laurie, who's uh, created the show, is, I mean, amazing. And some of the storylines are incredible, and, but they are real. And I think that's why the world loves the show, because we are tackling subject matters which I think other people were scared to. Um, and I think we dealt with in a classy, real way. Totally blessed to have one of the greatest casts. I mean, amazing. The world of, we're very lucky. In terms of Eric, Laurie Nunn just smashed it by like writing a sick script and a sick character who is uh, gay and black and comes from a religious background and just has like hello, 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 hi. And just has like, you know, just like a lot of, like a lot of layers to him. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, about Eric. Eric. I'm talking about love. Eric. Love and a lot of positivity. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of light in him, isn't there? But he has, he goes through his sad times as well, and so we see that all. And so shout out to Laurie Nunn. Shout out to Laurie Nunn. Shout out to Laurie Nunn, man. I got off. I think I got off quite easily in season one. Uh, in terms of Otis's uh, sexual performance, there's a lot of people had from quite intimate scenes. So this season, I uh, I get my fair share of. Um, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Which, uh, which has been interesting. It's, uh, I've never done this much um, wanking on camera. I'm Patricia Allison, I play Ola. I feel super privileged and blessed to be part of a show that is very current and using a dialogue that is exploring uh, areas of sexual content that is quite difficult and a lot of the sex scenes that we show in sex education aren't necessarily good or pleasurable a lot of the right. times and I think that's really important because we show about how to deal with it and, um, and also how you can kind of overcome the awkwardness. Mm -hmm.